God won't ever let you down. He got you. Love is amazing, His grace is bringing you every day. And if you ask, you receive abundantly, abundantly. And it's favor. One more time, welcome everyone to Celebration Pulse and Outreach of Celebration Church Johannesburg. Uh, last week, we had a wonderful time talking to Pastor Washington and Pastor Eunice uh, Odongi, who are our regional pastors in Eastern Africa. And we, we, we heard their story of uh, how God led them. Uh, you can imagine if we had gone back to the time when they got born again, how God led them we would be, he would probably need six sessions. But uh, but we, we started with uh, how they met, we looked at how God led them, the processes and so on, how they, they, they started serving God in the, in the deliverance church. And they, we, we ended at that time where they were uh, significant leaders uh, in the deliverance church. And Pastor Washington was uh, responsible for the, uh, apart from the men at some point, the, the prayer movement as well. And, uh, and I think I love that because the place of prayer is a place of power. And many times, even as leaders, as pastors, we think we outgrow prayer, but we don't understand that the, the, pray, the place of our strength is the place of prayer. And many times the enemy will try to keep us so busy, even doing God's work that we, we forget prayer. And that affects what, what we do and who we become. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I don't want to belabor the point. So welcome uh, back, Pastor Eunice and Pastor Washington. Thank you very much, Doc. It's always a pleasure to be here. We enjoyed ourselves last time, and I'm sure we're also looking forward to learning a lot as we go through this discussion. Thank you. You guys are looking... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They're doing of the Lord. <laughs> yeah. When, uh, you know, I like that red top, Pastor Washington. I mean, one of these days, I'm going to come over in uh, Kenya and get myself... I I think just make sure you show me the shop and I just make sure it's oh, yeah. and I, mm. I will look mm. you look like you look like you look like <laughs> <laughs> thank you doc so we, we, we really it's a pleasure, pleasure to be with you doc thank you it, it, it's, it's always a pleasure and uh, the, 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 it's exciting always talking to you but let, let's just start with prayer father we thank you for your goodness we thank you father that even as we enter into this conversation father your presence is with us you are leading us, you are guiding us, you are directing the conversation, you are ministering to your people and you are blessing them and your people are enriched, they are encouraged, they are edified, even as we, as we walk this journey, as we converse, as we reminisce, as we reflect on what you have done and the journey you have brought us. We thank you and we give you glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Now, for a change, I'll, I'll, I'll start this process. Uh, leading to how we met and why we now we kind of know why we met but then we didn't know but um, <laughs> but it's you know life is uh, full of surprises and the journey oh, sure. of life is, sure. is quite interesting so one time we had uh, a challenge with uh, our church in nairobi and we we, we needed to um to 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 replace uh, the leadership we needed a pastor and we, we were just hit with a resignation of uh, a pastor uh, due to various issues that happened that we will not get into in this, in this broadcast. And, we, and I remember sitting with Pastor Tom and we were saying, how are we going to handle this? How do we, where do we get a pastor uh, in Nairobi right now? We looked at our, the cast of pastors we had in Zimbabwe and we felt uh, it was the wrong time of uh, to send a Zimbabwean pastor, and we we really needed uh, a local, a Kenyan uh, pastor. So we so we are thinking, we are we are talking, and we are strategizing, and we had just invited Pastor Mark Kariuki to our conference, and Pastor Tom then says, "You know, I have this idea. What would it look like if I called?" Uh, my friend Bishop Makariuki and asked for help. So we deliberated a little bit. He said it, it may work. <clears throat> then on the other hand, we thought, but if we, it would then look like, this was just before our action conference. It would then look like we are inviting him for the conference because we had an agenda to try and get his help. 
But when the <laughs> invitation to conference came, we didn't even know that there was going to be a problem. So we really deliberated and we were struggling to say, should we make the call? Would, he, would we be misunderstood? Will it, uh, how will it look? And uh, uh, these are here yeah, two church leaders who are supposed to be spiritual and we can't put our finger on, on the mind of God. And we are just saying, how do we resolve this problem? And uh, at that stage, Pastor had said, I, I, you have to be in Kenya right now and go and resolve the problem and make a plan. And they said, yeah, I can jump into the plane right away, but uh, I don't have a plan. Do you have a plan? So we were looking at each other and so on. And then we said, you know what? We have nothing to lose. It, it seemed like uh, it was the only viable option to call Bishop Mark and... Uh, uh, we had a peace around it, but you know, being being people, you are thinking, is he going to think we we, we are abusing uh, his invitation and so on? Then after a while, we said, you know what? No, let's. Uh, we said, let's go ahead and make a call. Whatever, we have nothing to lose. The most he can do is to say no, and um, uh, that's our only shot. So we, Pastor Tom, while we were in that meeting, called Bishop Mark, and it so happened that. Bishop Mark actually picked up his phone. And he, so he said, look, this is what is happening. And uh, I'm just exploring opportunities. And I don't know whether you can help us. And if you can loan us a, a leader for a while, while we, we catch our, uh, um, our, our breath and see what can happen. And uh, Bishop Mark, I mean, a generous man, an incredible man of God. I had not met him at that time. He says, oh, Tom, you know, you are my friend. and." Uh, I will do anything for you. And uh, so he says, how do you want us to go about that? He says, oh, uh, my, my, my colleague, Pastor Tom says, look, uh, my associate, Dr. Makon, is coming to Nairobi. Uh, will you be able to meet with him and explore what is possible? And uh, he says, Dr. Makon is welcome. Just uh, let him uh, get hold of my office when he arrives, uh, set it up, and we'll meet. So sure enough, I flew into Nairobi as, as the situation in our church. and. Um, then we, then I went up to see Bishop Mark and I kind of embarrassed, how do, do you make an ask? Although we had made our, our, our intention known, we didn't even know to say, how does it look like to, to learn a pastor, you know, and how long it would take, or what it would mean, and, and so on. And would he give us uh, just uh, somebody to say he's just tired of and he doesn't know what to do with is he what's going to happen we didn't even know what was going to happen so we we have um, we, we, I had a significant chat with the bishop bishop says you know what uh, i'll do anything for tom i will uh, uh Marconi, don't worry he just uh, uh let's work the modalities so we we work out the modalities we uh, and i said look we we are not trying to get uh, and i regret that statement we are not trying to lure any one of your pastors. We don't want to get any of your pastors. And it's just we just want you to help us out of this, uh, uh, this hiatus, this problem. And once we, the situation is resolved, we will, uh, uh, we will return your pastor. <laughs> and, and he said, let me say, okay, we, we even want to do, let, let, let's agree, let's do it. And, and I said, look, we'll even put it in writing to say, uh, during or after we'll not make an offer to, to your pastor. And, and he says, oh yeah, okay, let's do the formalities, but that's not really important. I, I want to help you. This is the body of Christ. If, uh, if celebration is struggling, I am struggling. So I am willing to, and I will give you my best. So he said, you know, I am thinking of, I have two people I have in mind. I don't want to make a choice for you, but I think the first one I will send, I think is the ideal, uh, it will be painful for me because he's my, my best right now, but I can't give you uh, something that is not my best. So, but I, I want you to have a chat with him and have a feel to say, do you, do you resonate? Do you think he's the right person? If he's not the right person, we will, we will interview the second one. But, but I think this one, Washington should be your man. And, um, and I said, oh, okay, fine. So the arrangement was, was made and I think we, we met in, uh, I think it was Java or something. Java at Westlands. Java at Westlands. We, we met and we assigned each other. And I think, <laughs> you, you know, I, 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 love, I love my life. <laughs> so so the, 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 that's the journey. So we, we have a conversation and um, 
so let me hand over to you, Pastor Washington. You, you, you kick <laughs> off at uh, Java at Westlands over coffee. Now that you have brought me at Java, <laughs> <laughs> I can remember your, your, your niece who had, brought, who had driven you to Java. Yes, that I came you, with my Watching niece, you very like, keenly. Yeah. What is my uncle doing? Is Uncle doing with this Kenyan pastor here? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Doc, we met at Java. Yeah. And uh, Bishop Mark did not give me the details of what was going to happen. He only told me that, you know, Washington, there's a church that is struggling in this city. And I know you can be able to put your feet and your hand there and see how to help them come out of this situation. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to meet with a gentleman from Zimbabwe by the name Dr. Makoni. He's going to give you a call and you will agree on where to meet. And after you have done everything, you will, you will come back to me and tell me uh, what it is. But what I know is that you will go and will sort out that issue. And so I was released. Uh, in a short while, you called, and we agreed we were we meeting. I think we met on a Monday. I still remember that very well. Mm -hmm. We came to meet on a Monday, some early morning hours. Mm -hmm. And um, when we just set, when I, uh, I set my eyes on you, and uh, I was now asking, I think before we met with you, before we met you, my wife, had taken time to check on, we had checked on who is Dr. Makoni on the internet. Mm -hmm. and, we, <laughs> and we had we had gathered a lot of information. <laughs> oh my goodness. My, my, my sins have about gone Dr. before me. About <laughs> Dr. Makoni. <laughs> so we were so relaxed now. We knew the kind of person we were going to meet with and uh, uh, your credentials we had seen. We had known now we were asking God, show us more about this which you want us to do with Dr. McConnell. What is it? So you had to take the opportunity to explain where you are coming from and why the meeting, you, you explained the details of the meeting. And for me, even as you were explaining the details of the meeting already, uh, my spirit was at peace. My heart was at peace. I was just waiting for now. How do we begin to resolve this matter? Mm -hmm. uh, because when you talk, when it was an issue of indiscipline of uh, men of God or men of God, I because having lived around Bishop Mark Karaoke for a long time, uh, I have seen how pastors behave. We know those who behave well and those who do not behave well, and we had seen these things. And so it was not any news to us. I'm sure when uh, when uh, Pastor Tom first talked with, uh, with, 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 with Bishop Mark, Bishop Mark told me, I know that is an indiscipline case. That is a case of a rebel and uh, we will help where we can. So when I was coming to church, all that was in my mind, when you, you, were, coming, you were coming to introduce me, we had agreed on, I come. I think you took me to meet with Pastor James first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we brought Pastor Yunis in. Mm -hmm. So Pastor Yunis came along with me and we met with Pastor James and here you are. And it's from there we agreed now, the following day, should have been the following day, you are coming, you are taking me to church. Our heart was at peace. We were thinking of now, God, we are not going to come. We, uh, that is the day I read very strongly, uh, First Corinthians chapter two from verse number one, how Paul went to the Corinthians. Mm -hmm. He did not go to them with the eloquence and the wisdom of men, but he went to them in the, in the demonstration of the power of the Holy of Spirit. The Holy Spirit yeah. he, didn't know, he didn't want to know much about what they were, who they were. And I said, mm -hmm. uh, when Dr. McCoy introduces me to this congregation, uh, it's an ailing congregation. One thing I'm decided to do is not to not to delve into the politics of this environment. Mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. to bring Christ and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. And the, the following Sunday, I was to preach. Because you, you introduced me, Pastor James. Pastor James is the one who preached when both of us were, were present in the church. Mm -hmm. And Pastor James, James ministered. And you, you told the congregation that the following Sunday, I was coming to, to preach. Mm -hmm. And when I came to the pulpit and I, I was, the church loved me. These people, they welcomed me. And uh, when I realized they had welcomed me, I said, this is welcoming the Holy Spirit into this place. So what, I, what I'm going to do is just to speak the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And for three months, I was speaking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And that is what, 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 what blended people's hearts, jailed, we were jelly together and they forgot about where they were coming from and people started now trickling in back into the church. And Dr. Makoni, the rest is history. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, that, that, that was quite, uh, quite a journey. And I, I think the, the, the thing I, I, I respected is um, your hearing the voice of God through your leadership. And you're saying, uh, I am ready to be deployed. If the man of God says, go check this out, uh, I'll go and check it out. So we, we had uh, quite a wide ranging conversation in, 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 in that Java. I don't know whether our coffee didn't go cold while we, I don't know whether it was actually drunk or, or whatever. Oh, sure. but, uh, but, it was but a I long think... conversation. <laughs> it was a very long conversation really. Mm -hmm. And we touch on so very many issues. Mm -hmm. and, and if you can remember, Doc, kind of the Holy Spirit enabled us to open ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In that moment, I knew so much about you. In that, in that short time, God knew so much about me. It was just flowing as if uh, we, had been, we had been in this journey for a long time and we were bonded nicely. And I think that was the evidence that God was at work in this. We will Indeed. tell you the other side of it, how Pastor Eunice came in, and uh, I think she's going to bring out that. How when she yes, I, I, I was going to come to her because she, she's <laughs> my go-to, because I know she, she gives the, 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 the yes. in-between. You know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We saw but, God but, in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. b before she does, I think we, after that meeting, we, we almost, we, we were actually kind of agreed. And I said, you go talk to Bishop. And I called Bishop. I said, Bishop, I don't need to talk to the number two number. I, I'm happy with the number one. I think we can, we, we can work together. Uh, then we, we, we worked out the, 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 a few modalities and things like that. But uh, I think that conversation, I, I really felt that we, we were led by God. And, and, and I think the reason I bring this up is uh, to try and uh, bust a myth that some Christians have to say that every time God speaks, if it's uh, too critical, it's going to be an audible voice, it's going to be a dream, it's going to be... So sometimes God will simply order our steps. You may just uh, allow situations That's to, right. to work in yes. such a way. Then you get to a point where you say, oh, now you look back, you actually say that this really was the voice of God. And when we talk mm -hmm. about hearing the voice of the sun, and many people are just thinking, oh, I, I, I want an audible voice. I want to have a, a vision with the Lord Jesus Christ. I, yes, the, 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 God speaks in manifold ways and he can use any one of those. But our role is not to choose how God will speak to us. Mm -hmm. Our role is to be sensitive to whichever method he uses to speak to us. So in this case, we thought we were, I was speaking in another session. Uh, I think I was talking to Pastor Bad, say a few weeks ago. And I said to him, you know, one of the things being uh, the years I have served in leadership in the body of Christ, I, I learned one of the art of hearing the voice of God through what I call the art of fumbling. To say you fumble your way and you, you, start, you, you start something and while you're on the way, you're not so sure how it is. But as you take baby steps, the, the, the will of God becomes clearer and clearer. Just like he says to Abraham, he says to Abraham, he didn't say, Abraham, I'm, I want you to go to Mount Moria to, uh, to sacrifice your son. No, he didn't say that. He says, Abraham, uh, you, I want you to take Isaac and offer him on a mountain I will show you. So it's, as he was going, he didn't even know where he was going. I, I would assume if he was talking to his wife, 
And Sarah says, where are you going? He says, we are going to sacrifice. He says, where? He says, uh, you know, we'll find our way as we go. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but sometimes you have, God can lead you that way. And in this case, uh, that's how God led us to say, we, we, it was uh, uh, anointed logic, if you put it. Um, my mm -hmm. sitting with Pastor Tom, we are talking, mm -hmm. and it, in his spirit, just says, I think I can call Pastor uh, Bishop Mark. And then, then we have to think through and say, does it make sense? Will it be understood? Does it, how will it come out? But, but these are some of the ways that God speaks to us. And, and I want to say, this is such a strategic and a key move that was going to uh, completely change your lives. And yet God chose to uh, conversations like this to bring us to a point where he redirected your lives. And, and that, that, that's incredible. But I, I want to hear, I, I know you, you said Pastor Eunice was praying, you have, you have done your due diligence on us. <laughs> and uh, let's go to the prayer closet. Let's hear what was happening both in Pastor Eunice's heart and in the prayer closet. When, when, you, when uh, Pastor Washington says, look, a uh, bishop has just called me and this is what he has said. And uh, uh, talk to us about that. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. McCorney. I think in our previous session, I said how I left uh, my professional life. Mm -hmm. And uh, being that given that I was, I was, I loved my professional life, it was not easy to live. Because even after leaving and uh, my letter of uh, application to exit was accepted, and then later on they communicated that you can now go and everything was finalized, I still longed to go back. So for quite some time, I still felt, oh God, what is the next step? And I'm glad you've just touched on what God was doing because later on I came to learn when God gives you an instruction, he will wait for you to obey that first instruction, divine instruction, before then he gives you another one. He may give you several instructions, but until you, you obey the ones he has made revealed to you, it does not take you to the next step. So it's like I was in that spot. God has asked me to separ separate. I have separated. So here I am. And it's like I'm in a space where he wants to develop and build my capacity and join up with the ministry that he was doing. Previously, I was so professional oriented. That's what really I wanted to do. But now God had retracted me from that. Now my focus was redirected now into the ministry. So mm -hmm. it's like obey where you are, do what is necessary, and then I'll give you the next instructions. So I have learned from that process, even when we obey partially, Passion obedience is not total obedience. It has to be complete obedience. That's when God brings another divine instruction. You, 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 you put so, it politely, Pastor. You, you put yeah. it politely. Partial yeah. obedience is disobedience. <laughs> <laughs> partial obedience. Yes. Now, as you talk, you remind me of Saul when he did partial obedience and mm. they went ahead and sacrificed. So, I started walking together with him because in my spirit, there was a voice that was telling me, when God calls you, he does not quickly deploy you. He has to take time to process you. And that mm. is the process that many of our generation do not want to go through. They want to be called today. I have had a voice. I have a clear vision and I want to jump right to the end. No, mm -hmm. there is a process that we have to go through. And that process is mandatory for every believer God is a trainer. After he has trained you, he then deploys you. It's just like school. You are a candidate, yes, but you have to go through the exam. Qualify. And that qualification is not God who qualifies you. It is you yourself. It is mm -hmm. you yourself to prove yourself qualified. So I realized I had, I had steps to go through to qualify myself. And uh, it was a time of confusion. Oh, I'm detaching myself from what I love. Yet at the same time, I'm beginning to embrace the new life. This life that it makes him come back in the house for five years after midnight, you know? I, it was not really a life that I would say is admirable. But I, at the same time, I would look at it and see the consistency and say, there is something that this man is drawing from this life. Five years, mm -hmm. he would mm -hmm. come to the house after, literally after midnight. And mm -hmm. he would find us most of the time, you know, really asleep but still i knew there was something that he was drawing from that life so mm. when i stepped out of the un 
I now wanted to learn and God was processing me. I got to understand a lot of things, aligning myself to his lifestyle helped me to grow a bit. Now, one thing I learned, especially by aligning myself to what he was doing, is what I now call pursuing your prophetic destiny. That mm -hmm. one I embraced so clearly. I learned that every one of us has a destiny that God has already predetermined, pre-planned mm -hmm. for us to take. So I began now to pursue, to pray around it, to understand what is it, God, you want me to do? I know my previous life has been professional life, but I now want to know, now that I'm in the kingdom, what is it you want me to do? There were times I would fail. I would go back. I make a lot of applications. It's like I want to go back to my professional life. The results mm. were never good. None mm. of the, the results were good. So it's like God is still panel beating me. Focus, focus. I would focus. I go back. I, made, I make applications. It's like mm. I want to step back into my professional life. But it mm -hmm. didn't work. And if you remember, I don't know, Dr. Makoni, if you remember very well, I remember telling you when you came to Kenya sometime and you said you wanted us to come and attend a, a conference in Harare. That mm -hmm. is the time I was still pursuing my professional life. And I mm -hmm. told you, I don't think I'll come because I'll be in Southern Sudan, if you remember yes. very well. Yes, that was the time you, you were consulting. And I think Pastor Washington ended up coming with your daughter. He came with my daughter because my mm. mind was still here and there. It's mm. a, time, a time of transition. And when mm. you are transitioning, it's not an easy time. But eventually yeah. I came now, I, I landed where I am. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm together with him. Mm. And uh, when the opportunity, the second opportunity came for us now to travel to Arare, I came together with him. And believe me, Dr. Makoni, because I had now understood what prophetic destiny means, that time I was stubbornly saying, God, I will not step into a race that you have not marked out for me to run. I want to run the race you have marked out for me. Mm. So by the time we are coming to Harare with him, I was still looking for signs, for confirmation. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, he is. Him, he was convinced. He told me, but I said, no. I've got to hear this. I have got to hear this. I, I had, need to hear God I had, for myself. I mm. want to hear God for myself. I had known mm. Pastor Tom, and mm. I could see this is, you know, the internet exposes us to a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. And I knew this is a man worth his serving. But I said, no, I want to go hear God for myself. And mm. maybe that's that one I would also speak to ladies also. The fact that your husband is in ministry does not mean that your prophetic destiny is also for you to line up with him. You could be called in another direction, but still the two will harmonize themselves as you advance mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. So for me right now, now out of my professional life, I'm in Harare and I'm still looking for that confirmation. I want God to speak to me. So I remember we were received from the airport together with my, my, my husband. We came and we came up to celebration center. Then Pastor Tom takes his time, comes out of his office. That time we did a handshake like this with Pastor Tom. It was like, it's done. This is a confirmation. No mm -hmm. more questions. And in my spirit, I could feel like I was saying, this is the anointing I want to serve. This is the grace I want to serve. And mm -hmm. if you ask me now, I would say, the anointing upon Pastor Tom, the anointing upon Pastor Bonnie, that is the anointing I want to serve. And that is the grace I want to serve right now until maybe God changes, but I don't think he will change because mm -hmm. I'm so in love with this anointing, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Makoni, that, and then you confirmed it, the welcome you gave us in your beautiful house with your wife. It's like you were literally pressing the finger. Mm. This is where you're supposed to be. So when I would try to say, God, is it you? It's like all the words you are speaking. Mm. We spent at your house for a number of days. Every word you speak at your table, at your dining table, it's like you are there to mm -hmm. emphasize. You are putting a final stamp to it. And then something funny, maybe I would just share with you right now. Mm. Uh, my husband, uh, you may not know, he's also called Tom. My husband, this man, if he has not shared with you, he's also really? called Tom. Really? <laughs> really? For real? So, Pastor Tom? <laughs> so he, this is one, Pastor Tom. Once, once in a while he says he's Pastor Tom, but that's a name that is hidden to many. 
But mm. he has shared for me, he has shared with me the testimony behind mm. it. Now, so again, again, you God used that name more or less to confirm. Now, in mm. my spirit, I don't know what it means to him because he knows how the name came. But in my spirit, God was saying that this is the time. It's written in the book of Malachi chapter 4 towards the end. When God is lining up the hearts of the children to the fathers. The fathers, yeah. Mm. So he used that name. God was, the spirit of God was using that name and saying the reason to me, the reason why he gave him that name, it is because he belongs to the father and the father is Pastor mm. Tom. The mm. season for him now to belong and work under mm. the anointing of Pastor Tom had mm. come. So it was now the time for him to talk about that name. So mm. from that time, I could hear him now talking about that name. Previously, it's like, he was serving under different anointing. We were mm. under D Bishop Mark, mm, but mm, now mm. it was the time for the name to be operationalized. In my spirit, that is what mm. I perceive. So here we are, Dr. Makoni. I loved my professional life. If I'm given a job, I wouldn't mind doing the two, hustling around the two, but now I'm so in love with Christ and I want to pursue serving God. I want to pursue because mm. Coming fully out of my professional life has made me very focused. There are things I didn't know, but I'm really, no, I'm, it's like fast tracking, fast tracking mm. to understand mm. a few things. There are some books of the Bible I had literally just cruised through, but now I take time to understand. Leviticus, I'm now understanding. There are lessons mm. from Leviticus that I even apply to our day to. You know, now I am really focused around Daniel, Revelation. Revelation is a book I wanted not to deal with, but now yeah. I have read several, since I, since I came to Celebration Church, I would say I've read more, more than 20 times, just Revelation around 20 times alone, mm -hmm. just to be wow. able to understand. Wow. So I believe there's a confirmation every day. Yes, where the ministry is, we are working, we are understanding and we shall keep understanding what God expects of mm -hmm. us every day, but yeah. I am happy. I am happy, a wow, happy wow, and wow, fulfilled amen. woman. Wow. We, we, so fulfilled. We, we, we are amen. happy to have you and we love you, Pastor Yunus. <laughs> amen, amen. I also love you too. I, I, I think um, you kind of uh, compressed two things. Uh, the, 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 the first time that uh, you, you came on, on loan, okay, and then the second time, I think the, the second time when we, we, we dealt with a lot of the other issues was when uh, it's is forward. Let's, let's get to that later on. And, and, yes. and I think uh, when, so you, you served for a year and you guys were amazing. You, we had a situation where the situation was a little bit toxic in the church. You know, anytime there is kind of a split in the church, they, it, it, it allows there's a lot of toxicity, there's suspicion, people are looking at each other and some people are thinking, uh, let me just see whether this thing will work or I'm out of here, I'll go to where there's stability. But you guys were amazing, you were led by God, you were sensitive, we gave you a few guidelines, avoid this, avoid this, don't worry about the politics, we will deal with the politics, you just be, uh, be, 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 be pastors and love people. And, and I've said that to so many people and they say, yes, yes, yes. Then they go in and you find them who's so embroiled in the politics. And now it, uh, it, the, 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 their hands are now dirty and it's difficult to, to help them out. But you guys were so amazing. One of the things I really love is to say, uh, you have a, a strong sense of leaning into God to be able to hear what he's saying. But you have also have a strong sense of being loyal to leadership and being teachable. And those uh, characteristics are very important because if you, you are told, look, if you do it this way, you are going to have a problem. Avoid this for the now. And you guys are saying, oh, yes, we'll do that. And you, you did, you stabilized that church and it was incredible. And so I, I want Pastor Washington to just talk a little bit because we want to move to the just to walk us through that time when you were in between before we send in Pastor Priska and uh, how you felt, the, how you sensed what God was doing in your heart, what was happening in the church, and that prepared us for the next move. 
Mm -hmm. Well, that's a very, it's a very, um, it's a question that uh, has a lot of depths because I'll tell you when I was going back to, to Deliverance Church, the time we had been to Celebration Church on loan, when I went back to, when I was going back to Deliverance Church, I left a congregation that had my heart. Mm -hmm. My heart had bonded with the congregation. Mm -hmm. And I was already feeling like I am becoming a father to this congregation. Mm -hmm. Because in my spirit, the sense was that God was already digging and crafting what I would call a prophetic enclave. Mm -hmm. A prophetic enclave. A place in which God prepares destinies right. prophetically. Mm -hmm. So that kind of bonding had become so strong. Such that uh, the time that tells you that the time I had around, I was doing prayers with people. People had gotten to know how I pray, that my prayer, my 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 prayer life is like this and that. Uh, I know you are with, uh, with, with Pastor Sylvan there. I had bonded with these people, bonded with the likes of Pastor Sylvan, bonded so much with the likes of Pastor, Pastor Gift, such that we would enter into a council meeting because these were council members. Mm. We get into a council meeting and sometimes you can confuse it. We think you were, we were, we were in a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. It turns into a prayer meeting first before we get into the real business of the mm -hmm. day. And this was translating into the membership of the church also. So there was such a strong bond that had been developed and I knew that was a spiritual bond. Yeah. And that bond came as a result of prayers. Right. We did very good prayer watches. I know you mm -hmm. attended one or two of them. I, I can remember very well. You attended mm -hmm. one or two of them. And we would, we would enjoy the presence of God, you know, feeling the presence and just, just loving the atmosphere that we are in the presence of God. Yeah. So my time, that short time, uh, uh, Dr. McConney taught me a lot. And I knew in my spirit that it's, it was not going to be very easy to sever or to cut off just suddenly. Yeah. So when we were discussing, when we were discussing, and I was going back, and of course, even uh, Bishop Mark, when I went back to deliver his church, uh, he, he did not believe that I'd gone because he thought that, uh, because I kept on giving him reports, so he thought that now I was helping Pastor Tom through. Mm -hmm. But yeah. because he had to receive me back, because he knew the terms of engagement, mm -hmm. uh, I went back and stayed on, that was two years, without coming back to Celebration Church. Mm -hmm. But I was in touch, we were in touch with Pastor Priska. Yeah. Very well. So yeah. what I'm trying to say is that there are mm -hmm. principles uh, I learned out of this, which any, any pastor, let me talk to pastors now, any pastor should be able to understand that a pastor is not supposed to own a congregation. Amen. The owner of a congregation is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. He's the one who bought it, purchased mm -hmm. it by his blood. Mm -hmm. We should always be able to remain stewards. Yeah. Who can be relocated any minute, any time. Right. Serving, pastor, serving uh, Bishop Mark and serving Pastor Tom for me, did not become a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It was not anything huge. Mm -hmm. My loyalty to Pastor Tom was drawn from my loyalty to Bishop Mark. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was not hard, it was not difficult for me, yeah. even up to now, to become loyal to Pastor Tom and to become loyal to the ministry, Celebration Churches International right now. Yeah. And well, the body and, is and one. I, I think in, in the in the military, we, we call it rebadging. 
You know, each brigade is a, an insignia, a different beige color and so on. So if you are moved from the, uh, let's say, commando to medics, they, they change even the color of your badge. So yes. it's, it's re badging but it's still the same army. The, the basic principles the, uh, of military warfare and all are the same. And sure. the overall vision is the same. You are serving the same, the, the same commander in chief. And, and th th that's, th that's very profound. And I think to so me, mm. so go, go ahead. Just come, just come. No, just no, no, go, just go, go ahead. ahead. No, 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 so you I, go ahead. I just wanted to bring out the difference mm -hmm. during that time, that short period and this period. The mm -hmm. only limitation, the only limitation that short period carried was I did not, I was not able to focus on some long term programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Particularly in so far as race building up the spiritual stature of the mm -hmm. congregation is concerned. Mm -hmm. So that was the only difference. But yeah. the rest of the things were absolutely the same. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's so true and it's so amazing that, uh, you, you know, it's, um, the, the, I, I remember particularly uh, after you guys had done an amazing job and I, I was getting feedback from the flock, even talking to you, I could say, I actually, I said to Pastor Tom, Pastor, we, we have a problem. And he said, what, what's the problem? Then I said, you know what, the, there is an incredible bond that is happening here between uh, the Odongis and the church. And I, I believe that uh, there is a, probably a calling. So before I said it, actually, Pastor Tom then said, you know, I sense in my heart that uh, they should stay. And which, which is what I was getting to, but I was trying to find a way of saying it. And then he said, yeah, we, we could, but we have a problem because we have a contractual agreement that we are not offering them a job uh, during or after their term. So it will be dishonorable of us to, uh, to break that condition. I think Bishop has helped us a lot. We, if, if, uh, if Bishop was to say, I hear God saying, then it will be a completely different story. But if for us to say, we think God is saying, release your son to us, it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit self-serving. You know, and so we were kind of in that bind where we are saying, although we are releasing this couple, we almost sense that they, God is bonding them to us. He's called them to this. But how do you handle uh, some of those things? And I think it speaks to even a, a deeper principle. I think Pastor Eunice spoke to it a little bit when she was talking about the courtship to say, you know, when God speaks to you, it doesn't mean rush into it today. He can show you the end from the beginning, but right. the road to there is something mm -hmm. completely different. He has to, you have to work through that process and you look at mm -hmm. uh, most of the people called by God, even look at Paul. Paul is an incredible encounter with Christ. He starts ministering. He comes back to Jerusalem. He's almost rejected, but then Barnabas comes in. He is accepted, but after a while, he is released for 14 years and everybody has forgotten about him. But God is working. But his ultimate deployment for him to get into the fullness of the call of God started by Barnabas visiting him and bringing him to the church in Antioch. But that whole journey, it's not like, many people have said, oh, 14 years of West. But when you mm. hear him speak to the Galatians, he says, you know, I sought God, I had an encounter. I had, uh, God gave me revelation. He, it's almost like he had a download of the gospel. And the message he was preaching is not that, like he said, I didn't hear it from Peter or from men, but I received it from the Lord. I committed, I gave to you, delivered to you that which I first received from the Lord. So that time God is processing him. And I think that's the, what we talked about to say God processes you. So while it looked like we, we could tell that this is where God is saying, and we had a feeling, although we were not too sure, we had a feeling that you could also kind of sense it. But we, because of that agreement, we couldn't go past it. And yet you were uh, committed enough to say, we will trust God. If God is saying this, he will open the, the way, he will open the door so that even yes. the, your departure from deliverance will be with honor. 
But if we had said, you know what, oh, because we're here, God, we know what we are, we don't worry about the agreement, we are just going to go, then we, it would have been dishonorable. Very true. But, but, but to me, I think that process, people understanding to say, when God calls you, there is a process. And you go through the process, you don't have to be impatient. And that's one of the things I learned from your life, because you are saying, we are willing to go back, although we still know that we are leaving our heart here, we almost mm. see that God has called us here. And I'm also aware that at that time, it was almost like, I, I do remember Bishop Mark did say to me, you know, although I'm giving you uh, a Washington, I actually was beginning to think about deploying him. I actually had a church in mind uh, that way I wanted to send him. But I believe that uh, right now you'll be able to save you. And I do know, if you were, you, you, you are at liberty to talk about it, that in your heart you are also sensing a staring, that God does not kind of surprise you. There's a staring. There may not be clarity to say which way. Is he asking us to go start our own thing? Is he asking us to be deployed within deliverance? Is he asking us? But that staring, that sense of God is up to something, you already kind of hear that you want to just talk about a, a little bit about that. Yes, yes, Dr. Makoni. Uh, God was already preparing us. God, the Holy Spirit of God was already stirring our hearts and we had a sense of we have been in this in, uh, for some time and now it's time for us to <clears throat> move out and God can now begin to use us even in a congregation or which we, where we are the senior pastors or the lead pastors. That was already there because what was happening is just before, now this was just before you made a call uh, to me that you know, Pastor Washington, uh, Bishop Mark and Pastor Tom had a conversation. Mm. And in that conversation, they mentioned you. Mm. So they were talking about you. And I asked you, what were they saying about me, Doc? No, they were talking about good things. Mm. Then I told you, uh, then you explained yourself. That same time, that week to be precise, I was supposed to be moving out to the area, the region of Mombasa to go and do what is spiritual mapping. Mm -hmm. to, to a place which God, we thought God was leading us to. Mm -hmm. Mombasa is not near Nairobi. You do know that. Yeah, I know that. It's yeah. far. We were going to Mombasa. We, are think, we were thinking now uh, God is leading us to Mombasa. So that was already a time when God was shaking up things in our lives. So in other words, when you came on, when Pastor Tom and Pastor and, uh, Bishop Mark met and talked and discussed about us, God was working out our way mm -hmm. to a place we didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So it became celebration church. That's why it was not difficult for me to accept that, ah, uh, could it be this? It mm -hmm. must be this. Yeah. So, so to, to, bring, to bring in the context just for our viewers, so the Odongi served excellently for, uh, I think it was a year plus, was it? Yes, yes. No, you know, it was, it was less than a year. Less than a year. Yeah. Less than a year. Yeah. Yeah. As, um, as a bridge before we sent Pastor Priska. And then we knew that we said to Pastor Priska, we're sending you at max for three years. Or if it uh, extends, Pastor Tom had actually said two. And then I said, look, the, the church doesn't want a lot of uh, uh, turnover. Uh, let's try to make it three. And uh, after that, we will then need to have developed a Kenyan presence uh, because we felt that at this time, the church needs to be led by a Kenyan. And now we, and we, the more we were praying and talking with Pastor Tom, we kept coming back to, uh, to the Odongis. But we were saying, but we made a promise to, to Bishop Mark to say, during and after their stay with us, we are not going to make them an offer of employment. How do we get to, 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 to this conversation? And then it so happened that uh, one of the times Pastor Tom visits Kenya and he's, uh, they're talking to Bishop Mark. and they just, So Bishop Mark says, oh, how is the church going and, and all this and so on. And then uh, uh, so Pastor Tom gives an assessment. Look, this is what the church is doing. Uh, Pastor Priska is doing a phenomenal job. But uh, in our minds, we were thinking that we will be able to develop uh, a Kenyan uh, who will be able to take over so that we have uh, a, a Kenyan lead pastor. And um, the, then Bishop Mark then says, oh, you know what? I always knew that you would never be able to do this without um, 
a local Kenyan is elite. You need to, you need to seriously consider this. Then he says, you know what? I, I know uh, the, I gave you my son, Washington. I think you will save you well. But Pastor Tom is kind of a, a gentleman. He felt like, oh, you know what? Bishop Mark is just uh, being nice. So Pastor Tom turned it down. And he said, oh, no, 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 no. I will never do that to you. And he comes back, he meets me and he says, you know, I said no, but inside I'm saying yes. <laughs> and I said, so what, what do we do? Then he says, ah, you know, you are going to, to clean it up. You are going to change my no to a yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I said, I said, yes, sir. So, so he said, you know what? Um, you go down to Kenya and uh, I don't know how you are going to do it. You are going to have to talk to, to Bishop Mark and, and, and work this out. I, I really feel that when he, when he spoke, it was unsolicited. Uh, it's something we have been feeling and I could hear the voice of God. But at the same time, I didn't want it to look like uh, I'm desperate. I wanted to get his, his person. So, so I was off to Nairobi again and set up a meeting with uh, Bishop Mark and we meet, we, we reminisce, we, we catch up. And, and I said, Bishop, I have, um, uh, you remember you met with Pastor Tom and he said, oh yes, yes. Then I said, you remember your conversation about uh, the leadership of the church? And then he said, oh yeah, I remember. I, 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 I clearly know that I heard from God when he said, you know what, you must release uh, uh, Washington to celebration. And when I mentioned this to Pastor Tom and he pushed back and I, I said, oh, I, I don't know, but I, I'm sure I heard from God. So I said, Bishop, you, you are right, you heard from God. And Pastor Tom acknowledges that we also had heard from God. But you know, Pastor Tom is a gentleman. He didn't want to, uh, to, to seem like he was, uh, he was taking your, your guy. So, so he asked me to, to, to come and check whether you were very serious. <laughs> And, and you can imagine, I mean, how do you say to, 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 to Bishop Mark, hey, we, we don't know whether you were serious, but, but you know, I, I, I said it diplomatically, but, but really we just agreed. And he says, you know, I know Tom, he's a gentleman. He, I know, although he said no, I could sense that uh, this is what, was God, what God was doing. And I was actually waiting for you. I knew you would come back. And uh, so we then worked out the process. Then he said, look, uh, I'm in agreement but I know Washington and Eunice. If I was to say to them, go to celebration, they will agree. But I don't want them to go because I said so. So what I want you to do is you go and talk to them yourself. And uh, the conditions I will give you is that I don't want my, my, my sons to suffer. So I want to see the, the agreement you are going to make. I want to, but... Uh, and I want to have a, a say in making sure that everything is okay, that they are happy. So, so, so I said, okay, let, let, let me have a chat with them and then we'll get back to you. And um, so that's when we, we opened this new, new discussion. And I think that's what then led to, I think it was again before an action conference. And then yes. we said, we wanted you to, before you make a decision, we wanted you to come over and I think because Pastor Eunice had not been, I think, to, uh, to our conference, I said, look, we want you to come and have an experience, have a feel, and, 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 uh, and then you, we, we made arrangements for you to come. And I went back to Bishop Mark and I said, Bishop, uh, this is what we agreed. We think it's uh, not wise for them to make a decision sight unseen. So we would love, Pastor, uh, we will uh, organize for them to come over, uh, attend action conference, and um, then we will talk again after, after the action conference. And what really impressed me, and I want you guys to, to talk towards this. Uh, I, I seem to remember that when you came to action conference, you spent a lot of time in prayer. You, you, you even boycotted our food, you, which I, I was not too impressed about. And you, <laughs> but you spent a lot of time after the service, you were in the prayer room seeking God. I, I, let's talk about that. How, what was happening? <laughs> Doc, uh, while we were in that state, the prayer you saw us praying was not prayer for seeking God to tell us yes or no. Mm -hmm. That was a lifestyle. 
Mm. In other words, that is how we we live. That's how we do it. Mm. And we we don't change with circumstances and situations. So you have a lifestyle of boycotting my food. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were headed there. <laughs> so, but dogs, sometimes, you know, when you have got serious decisions to make, mm -hmm. you, you have to go to God when you are very serious about what you are doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have learned with time that there are prayers which must be done fervently. Right. And they must be done consistently. Mm -hmm. And the what brings fervency in prayers, particularly in petitioning, when we are, pet we are petit pet petitioning God to do, to do something in our lives, uh, one, fasting is very key mm -hmm. in the life of a believer. Right. Then total surrender, complete surrender, where you are not dictating on God's terms. You're not saying, God, I was praying that you do this. Mm -hmm. so that when it doesn't work it's like God is failing you mm -hmm. there are three things we have known about God he does not fail mm -hmm. he cannot change mm -hmm. and he cannot lie wow God he can't lie not, to you cannot fail he, he cannot fail you he, he cannot, cannot change, change. he cannot he lie. Does lie he Powerful. does not lie Powerful. yeah so if that is God, when you are approaching God for any issue, any matter, mm -hmm. rest assured that God is not the one failing you, mm -hmm. even when things seem not to be happening the way you want them. Mm -hmm. It's about you to get back to the drawing board and find out what have you so far done. Because mm -hmm. in every prayer, there is a responsibility man must take. Right. In every prayer you make, there must be a responsibility. You have a part to play. Because this is how we look at prayer, Doc, and I'm, say, I'm delving into this for the sake of our, our listeners. Anytime we are praying, we are unleashing a supernatural force from God to accomplish what God intends to do. Right. Because we were created by God from Genesis 1.26 to have dominion. Mm -hmm. So we live not for ourselves, we live for God. Any issue about our lives, and this is how we have learned to live ourselves here. Yeah. But we have handed over our lives to God, and we are saying, God, it is you. We are living your life through us, mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. So when we are getting into prayers, we must come to a place where we are asking God, now pray through us. Yeah. Pray those, pray those deep prayers mm -hmm. through us now. Yeah. I want to expand it. I know you mentioned right. something that we look like we are people. Before we ask, the answer has already come. And when mm. we are still speaking, he has already heard us. Now, mm. that is a realm which God just helped us to cultivate and mm. come to. That there is a realm you enter into with God. That exalted place, you know, when Christ was raised up from the dead and he sat on the right hand of God the Father, he also mm. lifted us up. He also yes. lifted us up mm -hmm. and sat us together with him. And in that place, we are in that realm. So when you bring from that realm, mm -hmm. you must know God hears, God answers, God cannot fail you. Hallelujah. When we were, when we were in your house getting back to your place, mm -hmm. we were just affirming things. So when what we were doing is we were affirming things that, yes, God, you have done this. Like another thing we have learned is when we, are, we have prayed, we must get back to God. We must get back to God and tell God that, God, thank you because we prayed and you, you answered the prayer. So you would see us come, from the, come from, the, from the conference and get back, get lost in our rooms. And uh, we say maybe we are not going to partake of a meal. It's just a sign that, God, we are serious about this thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we are serious about this thing. And, and, and I think that, that that's, that's the part I, 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 I like about you guys, that you, it's like you, you stay in his presence, you are present, you are in tune with him. Uh, I, I, I know, I think the, the last pastor's conference, we, 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 we shared a room, Pastor Washington, and you, you, you are always in prayer. Prayer is a lifestyle. It's, uh, and, and I think in, when we are talking about 
the presence of God. We are talking about the habitation of God. I think developing that lifestyle of prayer, of them being that totally dependent on God is, is, is critical and is powerful. And one of the reasons that I actually, the reason I, I really wanted to have this conversation with you is because even we as Celebration Church Johannesburg, we, we are uh, getting into a season of uh, uh, concentrating on seeking uh, the presence of God, staying in the presence and uh, creating an atmosphere uh, that allows the habitation of God. And, and, and I felt that you were the best pe people to actually uh, profile and show how God has been leading because I've seen you live it. You know, some people, or some pastors pray only because they are, they are praying to get a word or they are, they, they are praying because they have to pray before they preach. But uh, mm -hmm. I've observed you guys and I've seen you that you live the lifestyle, you, you live in prayer. And, and that's what I, I wanted to model. And, and, and I wanted to just uh, hear Pastor Yunis speak uh, on this issue of prayer seeking God and link it to that uh, conference where we, because I think after that conference, we then finalized your, your, your transition to Celebration Church. You just walk me through to uh, uh, how you were praying, what you were praying. You talked to the time when you, you shook hands with Pastor Tom and it's almost like God whispered to you to say, this is it, that seals it. But walk us through what you were going through uh, because the transitioning from one movement to another, even if you have yet God, is not an easy thing. And sure, okay, sure. So just get us help us to have a feel because the, the reason I want this is to say it also helps people say even when you have a head from God, you still need to process. There is still yes, a journey, yes. there's still a process. How do you engage yeah. God even when you have had him? And he's asking you to do something that is quite radical. Yeah, how, or mm. What's the process? That, that, that's what I want to hear from you. Just walk us through that's to say, true. what was that experience for you? The times you had prayer, both in the home, in the prayer room, in the, in, in the conference itself. Walk us through. Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Makoni. Yet, I want to say yet again, that prayer is continuous. You mm. don't pray. You reach a point and you say you prayed it. The answer has come. So here I am. I want to walk in the results of the prayer. In any case, I would say that we pray before, we pray do, during, and we pray after. And the best is to pray for an issue before. We don't wait for issues to surface. That's when we, we get down on our knees. I would say that's praying late. We always bank prayer so that when you are now go, undergoing the issue, you are not dependent on the presence of God that you are expecting to come upon you that time. No, it is the presence of God that you are walking in. Just like the book of uh, Psalms 91 verse one tells us, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high. So like my husband has said, we need to cultivate that dwelling place so that it is our habitation. It is not like we wait for a visitation and then it goes and then we wait again when there's an issue, we again call upon the Lord for a visitation. And I thank God because this is, again, what Pastor Tom talked about in this year. We are talking about the habitation of the Lord with us. So when we dwell in the secret place every time, we are always there meditating upon the word of God, praying to God, having an intimate relationship with him. That's what the Bible says, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So that when issues come, you are found there. You don't go there and you come out. So during that process, that period, I would say we had prayed before. And during that time, again, when Pastor Tom greets me and I feel this is a true confirmation, this is the anointing I wanna serve, it was just a process we were going through. And even beyond that handshake, when we were at your house, like my husband has said, we continue to thank God and clear any doubt. You know, again, the devil keeps throwing things at us. He will mm. come with a spark of a doubt and say, mm. are you sure? Did you really hear? Is it mm. really God who was speaking or you are thinking in your own mm. way? So we, we always have to clear these doubts in our minds and we mm. keep pressing on and allowing God to confirm. Even as where I am right now, the work we are doing, God keeps confirming the direction we are taking every day mm. as we mm. continue to pursue. We are fighting an enemy that is real and it's an enemy that does not give up. 
and therefore we should be alert and we should always dwell in that habitation of the most high. We don't go there and come out, we are done and we wait for another issue. No, we dwell in the presence of the Lord at all times. So, so you are so right we, in saying. So what, what you are saying is, it's not just a question of thinking about uh, waiting for the visitation, say God visits us, but it's a question of habitation. But there's also another side to say, we don't visit the presence of God. We stay, yes. we abide, we dwell, we have exactly. habitation. I intentionally have a yes. lifestyle of, uh, of staying in the presence. Yes, and mm. that's what Psalms 91 is all about, actually. He mm. who dwells, you dwell there, and the Lord releases his habitation at all times. You don't visit, then the Lord, you know, I like what Pastor Washington, I've learned a lot from him, by the way, what he preaches. If we visit the Lord once in a while, he will also visit us once in our, a while. If we are casual with him, he'll also be casual with us. And, we'll but, and we shall be casualties. So I, I am just that so much because it ministers so, sorry, so sorry, Say that again, say that again. I, I, I like it. <laughs> if we are casual with God, we will be. We will, he will be, be casual. casual. He will, he will be casual will with us, and we shall, say, and say, we shall say, be casual. I say, if we visit God casually, He will mm -hmm. be casual with us, and we shall be casualties. We shall be wow. casualties. Yes. Wow, that's powerful. Powerful. Yes, he, and yes, whenever goodbye, I, meditate, goodbye. I meditate on that, it really ministers to me. So, just coming back, we've talked about that brief period that Bishop Mark seconded us to come over. Then we mm. had to return after the brief period when Pastor Prisca came to, to take over for the three years. And I would say, looking, looking back uh, during that time, we had to go back to Bishop Mark. You know, like my husband has expressed, surely we had really bonded our spirits, our minds. So when it came to a time that we had to go back, for me, I felt like there was a tear. I was literally being torn. I remember at that time, I actually cried because it's, I was feeling this is not fair. This is not fair at all, at all. Mm -hmm. But eventually we left and I, I focused now what was ahead. The Bible says forgetting what is behind. So I was yeah. ready to forget what is behind and I focus on what is ahead. But it was not easy. It was not mm -hmm. easy, Dr. Maconi, because when you consider people like Pastor Sue, Pastor Gift, the ones who are now in Ethiopia with the, with the, the beginning of our church in Ethiopia, those who are so dear to us. It's mm -hmm. like we had just gotten intertwined like this mm -hmm. with them. They have such a special love and mm -hmm. we love them so much. Talk of Pastor Sylvan and the mm -hmm. wife, Nyasha. Mm -hmm. Even up to now, if they got an opportunity to come to Nairobi, Pastor, we would say, <laughs> hallelujah. We would meet them at the airport, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we had gotten so intertwined like this and we were feeling this is just a good place to be. Later on, Pastor, Pastor Memory joins us uh, mm. later on. That is much later on. But mm. when we were just about to exit and we, we, we began to make inroads and connect with them also with her husband. But we were later to meet them when we came back after the three years that Pastor Prisca mm. served. But mm. I would say that when we left, we felt like we are being torn from what where mm. we are supposed to be. So. When it was communicated to us again, we are coming back. That is the time I had discovered, I had already talked about it, what prophetic destiny means. So mm -hmm. whereas I felt torn from celebration church, I was now ready to pursue my prophetic destiny. So I prayed, we prayed, we waited upon God. But when I came to Harare, I greet Pastor Tom and he's like, oh God, this is it. It's confirmed. So I mm -hmm. thank God that uh, we are doing, we believe we are where God wanted us to be planted, where we are right now. And uh, one thing we did not want to do when we were leaving Bishop Mark, we've seen many young people live in a very dishonorable way. I like the word you use, dishonorable. When mm. you have served under somebody and maybe young people need to listen to us, when you have served, uh, even if he's so hostile, even if he's an ally, somebody said, for, for, for Samuel to manifest and come up, he had to serve an ally. So mm. even if that man you served was an ally, so to speak, we need to respect them. So for us, Bishop Mark being such a kind and a very caring man, 
we do not want to reach a point that we have to, you know, even given the age, the age difference. This is a man who needed to be respected. Even if he had told us, called us and said, and talked to us in a harsh way, we would still submit in quietness because this is a man we have served under and we needed to live in an honorable way. And I thank God because of Pastor Washington. He is a man, but he knows there is time for a man also to respect another man. And I, I really like that. So when the time came, finally, we were making plans to go to Mombasa, like he said. And earlier on, I had talked to some people, particularly earlier, much, much earlier, the first time when he wanted to go out in the ministry about 15 years earlier. I had told my, gone home and told my father, can you imagine my husband wants to go to the ministry now and we are just starting marriage. Then my, my father told me, go, go and find a way of communicating to him so that he does not go. Build first your family. So when I came back to him, that was about 15 years ago, I knew I would not tell him don't go because if it was in his heart and God has communicated to him, it was not in my desired uh, focus to tell him don't go, but I knew where the power is. So I said, I will not exalt myself against him, but I know in humility, as I humble myself to God, God knows how to exalt me. Because in, within me, I knew it was not time. But this time round when he's talking of going to Mombasa, I'm the one who was pushing him, go, it is time, go. Go and do mm. that spiritual mapping. So yeah. I felt it was the time, the right time for us to make the move. And he has said clearly before he made the move in that week, that's when your call came through. So I want to thank God because these things are done in prayer, not in excitement. Mm -hmm. We don't excite, get excited because of one dream we have had. In any yeah. case, after you've had, had a dream, confirm that dream with the inner witness. That's what yeah. I would want to say. Mm -hmm. Confirm it with the inner witness that this, this is God. Many of us will interpret dreams in a wrong way. And there are so many other sources of dreams. And the enemy can even come masquerading mm -hmm. himself in your dream that this is me speaking. It's time to leave. And mm -hmm. he looks like he's talking 100% things that are correct. But he yeah. wants to deviate you from the prophetic destiny. So even after dream, take time, work with the man of God, pray with the man of God whom you're serving under, and just know when God calls you, there is a time to process you. So here we are, and I thank God it was prayerful every day. Mm -hmm. And even those doubts when they come, you not, not really doubts, it's like you those give questions, yourself- Sometimes you wondering. Yes, the wonderings and those, those, uh, those uh, times you give yourself to seek the Lord again, mm -hmm. another confirmation, there is nothing wrong with it. The more yeah. confirmations, confirmations you get, the better. So our lives have been lives of prayer, Pastor wow. Mokoni. Thank you. No, no, I, I really appreciate that. And, and, and I think uh, it's very important to the, the points you raised to say we need to keep going back to God, have confirmation, and uh, live honorably. And I think one of the things that I, I really want to emphasize is that issue of saying, even if there is a delay, you know, the, the Habakkuk says, the vision is for an appointed time. It's, Though it tarries, wait for it. So sometimes we, <clears throat> we almost push things and we say, oh, I want to do this. But uh, if, if you look at your lives, you see that there is that release for a few months. And then you kind of test <clears throat> that you feel that this is what God is saying. But then there's that three years where it is a hiatus, you are back where you were and you're saying, God, what was that all about? But he, though the vision tarries, wait for it. And Amen. God knows the right timing. He knows how to move you. And you can sense that even the point where you were beginning to sense that uh, what I call it, a holy discontent and an agitation that was saying, you know, something is up, the timing is right. But although we were not clear to say, what is that timing? Is it Mombasa? Is it whatever? But th that's, that's how God works to say, he prepares you, you see something. The fact that you have seen it does not mean it's for the now. You still we need to wait for the vision. What I want you to, to help me, Pastor Washington, help me help our viewers. So here you are, you are ready to go to Mombasa for the spiritual mapping. And you, 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 you then get this call to say, 
a celebration is calling. I think it's about time. It, just give us a little bit of insight. How did you process that? How did you then settle to say, oh, it's not Mombasa, it's actual celebration? A good question. A good question there, Doc. Um, just as we are saying, living in the presence of God simply means that God is ordering even a minute. Whatever is happening in the minute, God is ordering. So while I am processing going to Mombasa, you make a call and I listen to you. And I'm not just listen, listening to Dr. Marconi with my physical ears. I'm listening to Dr. Marconi with my spiritual ears. So within my spiritual ears, and they, this, is, this is a mystery, Dr. Marconi, let, 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 let our viewers understand that dwelling in the presence of God means a lot when you want to hear God. Mm -hmm. When you're dwelling in the presence of God, you will not only hear God with your physical ears. You will be able to hear God, just like my wife says, that she greets Pastor, uh, she greets Pastor Tom, and the greeting sends the greeting sends signals in her inner voice, and she listens to what God is speaking, and it is the truth and nothing but the truth. It calls for daily dwelling in the presence of God. So during this particular time, uh, we were praying and fasting, we were waiting upon God. And here Dr. Makoni speaks, and I'm hearing Dr. Makoni with my spiritual antennas raised up. In other words, I am tapping the frequencies of your voice in my spirit. And as I type those frequencies of, of, of your voice in my spirit, I make interpretations. I'm, I'm able to sense what now, which frequency is, is, taking, is going longer with me, longer with me. So as I continue to listen and listen, I'm able to say now, this looks like what God is telling me to do. Wow. I am not saying I'm hearing a voice. Mm. There, is no, there is no audible mm. voice I'm hearing. Mm. Not, not an audible voice, but my state, my position, my position with God enables me to touch on God. So that when God touches on me, I'm also able to say that is the finger of God. Yeah. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to rub off or to delete this notion that you can mm. be seated in a corner waiting for a voice to be heard that God will be mm. able to speak mm. to you. Mm. It's, yeah. Well, God, God, God does speak to us in very many ways. That, can, that mm. is possible. That is also yeah. possible. But I'm mm. telling you what happened to me. This is my testimony. Yeah. Yeah. That is how I listened to it. That is how I had God. Yeah. I, I, I hear that. And, and the, the Bible does say the same. You, you, you know, the... the once you have your mind, the Bible says that do not be conformed to the world, but by, be renewed, be transformed by the renewal of your mind. When your mind is renewed, then you will Amen. understand the perfect will of God. So Amen. what does that mean? It means God sometimes uses our thinking, our logic, our processing. He can speak to us through, the, through our mind. And unfortunately, many people have thought, oh, if you are going to process it, if you are going to think about it, then, then, you, then it's not God. But God speaks even through your mind because you see, if our mind is set on God, God can speak to us through our mind, through our thoughts. And that's why even if you look at uh, Acts chapter 16, when Paul is trying to go to, Macedonia, to, 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 to Asia and the Holy Spirit says no, he's trying to go to Bithynia, the Holy Spirit says no, then they have a vision of this man from Macedonia and uh, who says, come to, uh, uh, come to Macedonia. The Bible says, we concluded that God was calling us to Macedonia. In other words, they thought, they processed, you know? And they, so they concluded, it means they reasoned, they thought it through. So you can reason the call of God. You can think through, you can process to say, I have this offer, I have that offer. And God, what is God saying? And, and if you look at some people say, oh, but there was Mombasa, there was celebration. How did you have to choose? You see, they, sometimes when God speaks, he creates that, that, that agitation that says something is up. And he may give you something that, that you, if, you are, if you don't know God, if you are not staying in the presence, you then run with what you think you are seeing when it was just for you to be, to activate you. It was not exactly what he was calling you to. Here's an example. The same story we are talking about, about Macedonia. Paul gets, gets the word, uh, here's a man from Macedonia saying, come to Macedonia and help us. 
if Paul was to be like most of us, he was going to say, I'm not going to talk to Lydia. I'm not going to do this. I am going to, I want the men who's, who appeared, who called me to Macedonia. But you, but you know, there's no clear evidence in scripture that he actually met the Macedonian men. <laughs> At most, we, can, we can try to say, oh, when he got into prison after the deliverance of that young girl and the, 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 the jailer was saved, but, but it's, it's almost a speculation. But we have no clear evidence that there was actually a person who called him to Macedonia. God just wanted him in Macedonia. And, and then you take the gospel towards Europe. So sometimes we become so fascinated with the specifics of the dream that we miss what God is calling. Very true. Another example is, you, you know, when Agabus came, the prophet Agabus is a very sharp guy who, has, who hears God and who, who actually prophesied the, 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 the famine that was coming to, to come to Jerusalem, and it came. And this guy came and he, he, he took Paul's belt, he tied himself and says, this is what the, Jew, the, the Jews are going to do to the men who has this belt. But, but we don't see in the Bible an actual place where Paul, people got his belt and arrested him. All the issue was to say, God was saying, eh, you are going to be arrested and handed over to the Romans. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we yes. get stuck to the specifics when we see God is simply saying, look, this is time. You, you may have to move out of deliverance. I'm taking to a place you don't know. I'm going to give the clarity while you are on the go. So Very true. My, my sense and my understanding is that the, the, that, that when you are uh, reaching out, is it, remember what I talked about, the, the art of fumbling to say, you hear God as you fumble. While you are ready, and then God begins to speak, it becomes clear, it says, oh, okay, actually it wasn't Mombasa. Actually it wasn't Bithynia. Actually it wasn't Asia. It was Macedonia. You know, mm -hmm. but but you have to be on the go, and that is critical for people to know that you need to keep, and, and that's why Pastor Eunice kept saying you need to keep in the presence of God. You need to say, I hate God. I need to confirm and reconfirm and reconfirm. I need to keep keep coming back because what you may see and you think this is it may actually be just a sign that God is saying, mm -hmm. look, this is where we are going. So if you stick to just like think about Abraham. Abraham is told, I want you to go and uh, sacrifice Isaac. If you had just stuck on that word, you'd have just, when God says, no, don't do it and don't kill Isaac, he was going to say, I rebuke you, Satan, and you quickly just will, will have killed Isaac. <laughs> you'd have missed God. But you see, the, the, the Bible says, when Jesus says to the devil, men shall not live by bread alone, but mm. by every word that it proceeds. It's not past, it's not that proceeded, no, no, but no, no. it's the proceeding word. So we need to keep hearing God. God can reorder, can make an adjustment. In You may say, to get this person out to where I want, I need to show him this picture. And once they see that picture, I say, once they're there, I'll show him another picture until I get them where I want them to be. So that's a process. God processes us. And I think that is very important for people to understand. Amen. Yeah. Very true, Doc. Yes, yeah. if Pastor, we, we, yes. We, have, we have five minutes and there's one thing that I don't know which one of you is going to talk to this. Uh, <laughs> one of the key things I have seen about you guys is the, you, you mentioned it a little bit when we were talking about um, uh, not just being you as a pastor or you as pastors, the people who get into the presence of God, but leading people corporately into, into prayer, into a lifestyle of prayer, into the presence of God. In, and so that the congregation doesn't say, oh, the pastor will pray for us. The pastor is the one who hears God. Oh, Pastor Eunice is the one who will have the dreams. They must go to God for themselves. But, but I, I know, for example, that uh, there was a time, I think you may still be doing it. There was a time that anytime we had a prayer conference, you, you went down, you created your own internal prayer conference where you got your leaders, you got your people and said, we want to download what we received. We want to want you to walk into prayer and you led people into prayer. So I want you to, as we move towards the close, I want you to just talk about uh, uh, how do you, uh, or rather talk about that experience of corporate prayer uh, as a people, as a church and its importance. Yeah, um, you, you're right, and um, you rightly say we have just come out of our our prayer conference. We did it. We did it last 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 week. We after the the prayer the kingdom prayer conference, we did our I don't want to call it our mini one, but we did a, we did one just after the one we did in in Borodell, 
when we came down to Nairobi, we did, because that had been our culture, that every time we come from a, a prayer conference, we also have to hold our own prayer conference. Ours we have dubbed as a Kingdom Prayer Summit. Kingdom Prayer Summit. I like it, from Kingdom the fact Prayer that, Summit. Kingdom Prayer Summit, from the fact that the summit or summit is the highest point of a mountain or a hill. Mm. So when we come from Borodel, when we come from our Kingdom Prayer Conference, we want to also rise up with people, we want to lift up people to also come to this summit. Let them come to the mountain, let, let them also come to a place where they can interface with God. So that's, uh, we do that. We have, you have just done that, uh, I mean, two weeks, uh, one week ago. But now let me talk about what we do in the church here. Mm. Uh, Ideally, what we have done is we have always just magnified what we pick from uh, celebration churches international. Like, for example, when Pastor Tom comes down with an issue, we pick that issue. And uh, there was a time Pastor Tom came down with the issue of one uh, 10 minutes prayers. Mm -hmm. That 10 minutes prayers has become our prayer up to today. Mm -hmm. The 10 minutes prayer. And we have re-energized it, given it shapes and forms so that people learn to appreciate it and people come to pray. When there was a time Pastor Tom uh, released uh, a spiritual positioning prayers, he talked about spiritual positioning prayers. We mm. picked that and gave it a slot in one of, in one of the days of the week. Mm. And up to now, it has become our household name. Uh, th those are moments, what, I, what we do is we bring everyone to rally around what they know is, first of all, a ministry agenda. And yeah. secondly, it's a kingdom agenda. So that way it becomes easy for us to inculcate it or to make people rally behind support it. So like for our spiritual positioning prayer is so huge now because it's not just a prayer. We teach people how to pray. We come down and we give, we teach, we teach as we pray in that spiritual positioning prayers. And that is what now gives people how to pray. Because we discovered if the disciples of Jesus asked him to teach them how to pray, this generation that we are living into, do we think they know how to pray? Have they mm -hmm. prayed enough? They don't know how to mm -hmm. pray. So we must teach people how to pray. Now, on top of that, we also realize uh, this could be in Kenya, but maybe it's also found in South Africa and other parts of the world, that some people misuse the concept of spiritual warfare. Right. There is such a gross misuse of spiritual warfare. And we decided, instead of complaining about what is going wrong, why don't we do what is right? And therefore, we also set up a platform where we talk about spiritual warfare and we teach people, we pray spiritual warfare. Because mm -hmm. we know that the moment we became Christians, we became enemies of the, of the, of the devil. And yeah, therefore, yeah. the concept of spiritual warfare is real. That's why Paul talks about the whole armor of it. So that whole armor, we know that that armor, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of, of the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the shoes for readiness for preaching the gospel of peace, all that comes becomes only effective when we pray. It is only in prayer that we mm -hmm. actualize the putting on of that armor. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it can remain, it can just remain a language we speak sophistic, uh, sophistically, philosophically, and mm -hmm. yet it doesn't have any effect in our lives. So mm -hmm. what we do, we make, we engage the church, we engage people. We don't pray alone. Every prayer we make, we have a way of involving the church. We have a way yeah. of involving people. And so what we have done is we have created very many prayer uh, for us. Pastor Eunice can tell us how many hours do we pray per week seven and a half hours per week. We pray seven and a half hours per week, corporate prayers. Wow. Yeah, in Kenya, there is uh, there's a flight in Kenya, which there's an airplane uh, flight in Kenya, which is called 540. So because yeah. of that name 540, we have decided to wake people up at 540 to catch that flight. So we are wow. calling it the, five, the 540 moment with God. So people wake up at 540 to catch up with God so mm. that before you go to work, you have talked to God. We have this notion. We, we say that before you talk to your boss in office, talk to God, who is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Th th that, then, that, that is profound. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. <laughs> then uh, what we did is during this 540, uh, we, for one whole year, I was doing 
prayer decrease during that hour. I was mm. doing decrease for five minutes, and this decrease were recorded, was were, 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 were written down, and I would read them to people in the hearing of people, do them, then post them in, on the chat for people to watch, people to see, people to keep praying the whole day. We did that for one year, I think more than one year. Then kind of God uh, just spoke to my heart that now people need to be taught how to pray this decrease. So mm -hmm. we changed gear. This time we wake up at 5.40, but we, we now set people, we set people on to, uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we do prayers. We, I, we give them a prayer item and we they are seeing us praying, how we are praying, praying through for about three minutes or so, mm. bring another item, and then culminate all that process by decrease, by making some decrease uh, for about two or so minutes, and we are done. We wake up at 5.40, and by six, or uh, by five, uh, five minutes past six a.m. in the morning, we are done. We let people free to do whatever they do to prepare wow. themselves for work. That's so powerful. that is our corporate prayers. Yes, that, that, that's powerful. That creates that uh, sense of the presence uh, of God. And it's very, very important. Uh, I have one minute for us to close. And I want Pastor Eunice to just uh, uh, give us one parting shot uh, in less than one minute on uh, a, 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 any principle you want to leave us to say in terms of seeking God and the presence of God and prayer. Yeah, just back to Psalms 91. Let's learn to press into the presence of God and remain there. And so that we invite the habitation of God, because this is the year of the fathers, the voice of the son, and we want that voice to continually speak to us. And maybe just to add something small on that, apart from remaining in the presence, in the habitation of God, as his habitation is continuously with us. I wanted to say many people, when they are working their ways into their prophetic destinies and their prophetic ministries, Many spiritual pregnancies are aborted just because we talk too much instead of talking to God. Let's mm. learn to keep quiet when God is processing you. Because when you go throwing left, right, because of your leaking mouth, many of us have leaking mouths that keep throwing things all over. Let God work on you until that pregnancy comes to term so that we do not abort or we do not miscarry spiritual pregnancies. And we shall realize that life is very sweet when we carry that pregnancy, the spiritual pregnancy to term, especially in our current generation. Thank you. No, a last okay. one, just a last one, just to help somebody know. Y y yes, Pastor. Jesus said that my house shall be called a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Tom today is talking about us going back to the basics. Yeah. As we go back to the basics, let us understand that God is releasing an anointing of prayer. Not prayer by the clergy only, but prayer by everyone praying. May this come as a prophecy that God is bringing us into a new dimension mm. of authority in our prayers, where our prayers spoken with authority, invested in the promises of God, will enable us to confront every stronghold of the enemy. Amen, amen, amen. amen. We are getting there. The, the, Amen. That's powerful. While we are getting there, Pastor, would you like to just close us, Pastor Washington, by praying and decreeing that there is a, a, a releasing a spirit of supplication and grace upon his people that we may stay in the place of habitation? Let's pray. Father, we are indeed very grateful to you for this moment and this hour, for giving us the opportunity even to share with your people what you are doing, what you have done, what you will continue. Father, this is our prophetic moment. Jesus. We call it so because the Jesus. spirit of Christ Thank that you. indwells us, the spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. Uh -huh. And because we are filled with the spirit of prophecy, mm. we are a prophetic Thank leader. You, Father. Father, I release the grace mm. and the anointing of prayer yes, to rest upon Jesus. the church during this time. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, 
We thank you that people will rise up to the occasion and begin to seek your face and thank you find you. We honor you, we magnify your holy name that on this platform, Father, our viewers, those who will be listening to this message, will be stand up to receive effectual talent, ability to pray. We give you honor and we give you praise. For this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Th 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 thank you so much, uh, Pastor Eunice and Pastor Washington. I think this was an, an amazing conversation. I, I, I wish we had set up for, for three sessions, but I think we can always catch up some other time. I mean, we, we, we ran so uh, way beyond our time because we were enjoying ourselves. But I think the principles that, you are, that we are learning are critical, they're important for building that habitation, that place of the presence of God. So we thank you. May God bless you. May he enrich you and may he reward you for your availability. And so we thank you and we bless God for your lives. Amen. Thank you, Doc. We really appreciate it. God bless you. And the rest of our viewers, those who will be able to partake of this, may God bless them, may God charge them and keep them. Amen. Amen. Th th thank you so much. So, so uh, celebration, Pauls, this is... Uh, us signing off, uh, we have had a wonderful two weeks uh, with Pastor Washington and Pastor Eunice. I think there's so much to glean from them. And I want to encourage as many as can. Uh, Pastor Eunice and Pastor Washington, they are available on uh, Celebration Church Nairobi Facebook page. You want to like that page so that you can, you can pick some gleanings on the things that are happening in Nairobi, Kenya. Thank you so much. God bless you. We meet again next week sometime here at Celebration Pulse. Thank you and God bless. Won't ever let you down. He got you. His love is amazing. His grace is bringing you every day. And if you ask, you receive abundantly, abundantly in his favor.